Mr. John Levins, the Cash Vice Chairman of the ABI, and he is uh, Deputy Mayor of the Wind Shire. So please welcome John Levin to the podium, uh, and he's going to be talking about the NLIS system. Thank you, John. Uh, thank you, Ashley. Uh, just briefly, uh, I um, got a little bit of casual vacancy on the Board of Rural Lands Protection Board, and one of the first things they handed me was this impact statement for the introduction of NLIS. Well, I read it and read it again and went round and through it and up and down. And the biggest thing was there was no problem to be solved. There is no problem in here. So there was no plan of action, and a whole lot of meaningless tables and one thing or another. <clears throat> but the, the cost of 43 million and 160 million benefits, it didn't say where or why or anything else. But after eight years, our, our costs are heading for a billion dollars, and the benefits to my book way of knowing is just big fat zero. But even in here, <coughs> the uh, high-risk movement through the sale yards and abattoirs over the critical few weeks of the incubation period for the disease may satisfactorily be traced by the current transaction schemes. So there's never really been a purpose for it. Now, Michael Beer, he's the um, coordinator for New South DPI in Orange, and he pointed out for the scheme to be credible, Every, every tag would have to be accounted for. It was just never going to happen. So um, the only way you want what I would conclude was that NLIS was being introduced because the availability of technology. <coughs> okay, so we're on the biosecurity. <coughs> it, you, People, staff are not going to sit up for seven days waiting for an NLIS transaction to be notified. Lost tags and replacement tags, they just ensure a dead end. The impact statement pointed out that the current transaction scheme is already in place. And if putting mouth disease infects wild pigs, you know, what, what's the point in NLIS? So, here we go. Right. Uh, well, this was really interesting. Um, the cat was among the pigeons in the start with New South Wales DPI. Uh, and this Frank model, he just got up and he said, nobody expected to work. It was all about perception. Well, <laughs> $100 million a year for perception. You know, what, what are really are we on about? Uh, and then you may recall uh, before the 2007 election, Peter McGoran promised $50 million to fix the database. Labor won the election, no 50 million, and, and everything's working fine. So, so okay. Um, and this was interesting in, um, in the Weekly Times uh, that the, um, oh, a, a visitor from Japan, and he had businesses in America and Japan and everywhere else, and he, he just said, we know the system, but we don't regard it so much important. So NLIS played no role in their meat procurement. None at all. Uh, where are we up to? Well, the ABA commissioned a, uh, uh, an audit that involved 57,000 tags. 20% uh, of the cattle were found not to have lifetime traceability. Now, this doesn't include cattle direct to, to slaughter. So if there's any transactions, we can sort of go right into that. It, 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 would, be a, it would be farcical. So I, I do have a copy of that here. Uh, but, and it's also it's on the website. Now, uh, Kim Munkton was um, at the Head Ball in 2011, and Scott Hanson told the audience that <coughs> NLIS has been ineffectual in marketing and the ability to enhance profit in the industry. Now, leak reports indicate that there's 120 million entries on the NLIS database, so it, it is you know, just farcical. And then they, they won't tell us anything. You can't get any information that's in confidence and all this Well, where are we up to now? Warfighter. 
<laughs> oh, rocks and distortions. Well, so, some of you may have got tangled up in this, uh, but there was a, there were feedlots <coughs> just uh, discounting cattle. Uh, that, that were, um, they had orange tags and, and, and all this type of thing and if they'd been notified to the database a few times they would ask the agents well, it, well sorry I didn't use that well anyway but this, this is a true story <laughs> that, that um, an agent inquired about the status of tags on board cattle like he, this fellow had bought some cows and cars and it bred some cows and calves and took the calves along to the sale and uh, they hadn't been replaced. So the cattle were drafted off and the tags from a packet were scanned and they were recorded so that the agent could say, oh yes, they're all breeders, cattle did to check the database. But I don't know what happened when they got home and checked the cattle. I have no idea. So <laughs> we're, we're continuing to tell the management advantages of NLIS. <coughs> RFID is not NLIS. Tags as a management device, it, it, it's a great idea. But we've been told all the time that the, 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 the tags are NLIS, and that's like for management and things like this. Now, um, well, NLIS is nothing more than a nonsense based on fantasy if you want to be politically correct. And not one carcass has been identified and isolated because of non-compliance with NLIS. So it's eight years and a billion, almost a billion dollars spent on it and, and no result. How <coughs> we go? Still in? <laughs> yeah, he said, I'm back. Yeah, good, okay. Yeah, well, NLI continue to tell producers it's a wonderful marketing tool. The imp well, even in the impact statement, uh, it said there are no direct costs or benefits to Australian consumers. And, and this is part of a lie that consumers may benefit from improving beef quality as cattle breeders take advantage of the NLIS to better record and manage the herd performance. Well, you don't need NLIS to use tags for management practice. And, and like the foreign embassy, like they have access to the Australian media, they could be here, every, good luck to them, you know. They know and react accordingly. Uh, <coughs> but we, we've lost market share into Japan and Korea to America. They've got no NLIS, no LPA. So, like, this it, it, is just nonsense. <coughs> like, you know, one of that Japanese gentleman with 3,000 bis uh, businesses just dismissed as nonsense, you know. And, well, if, if it was... Um, Alan Bond or Christopher Stace or somebody, they're carrying on like this, they'd be up for fraud. Okay. Well, uh, yes, uh, John Carter and myself met with uh, Minister Katrina Hodgkinson a few times, and all she could tell us was that the NLIS was working to expectations. We have no idea who or what expectations. There doesn't seem to be any. Uh, and, and of course, for, for the shape. Please be assured that any proposed changes to NLIS will only be considered after wide industry consultation and attract broad industry support. So, um, you know, I, look, who knows? I like it, but I, I've spoken with, well, every producer I've spoken with, and, and some agents of Forbes and, and, and uh, a buyer from Cowra, and I think that there'll be momentum to just simply defy it. If they try electronic tags on sheep, <coughs> so I'll be there anyway. Okay, no, I'll just go there. You do that? I'll just go there. Right, good. Okay, I think that NLA and the big bodies have failed to produce it. It's an absolute disgrace to continue to endorse a $100 million per year nonsense when the tail tag system complemented branding and earmark. <coughs> so, as far as I'm concerned, in a way, it's an absolute bloody crap.